Following exercise, we generally tend to ingest a meal that is rich in carbohydrate molecules. And the reasoning behind that is we want to give our cells, our liver cells and skeleton muscle cells to basically replenish their supplies of glycogen that were used up during that exercise. Now, how does this process actually take place? So how do our cells, specifically our liver cells, actually regenerate and replenish their supplies of glycogen? This is what I'd like to focus on in this lecture. And I'd like to focus on how insulin and how glucose molecules actually affect liver cells. So after ingesting a meal rich in carbohydrates, the blood glucose levels in our body rise above the normal 5 millimolar value. And what our liver cells will try to do is they will try to maintain the proper level of glucose in our blood and they will uptake that glucose into the cell. Now, what will also happen is the beta cells of the pancreas will begin to produce and secrete a small peptide hormone known as insulin and insulin will travel through the bloodstream and eventually will make its way onto a special receptor protein found on the membrane of liver cells known as the insulin receptor. And once the insulin binds onto the insulin receptor, that initiates a signal transduction pathway. Now, what this signal transduction pathway does is it ultimately stimulates protein kinases. So let's see how that takes place. So insulin binds onto the insulin receptor that creates a conformational change on the inner portion of the receptor and that causes a self-asphorylation process. And what that does is it basically transforms the IRS molecules from the inactive into the active form by phosphorylating these IRS molecules. Remember IRS stands for insulin receptor substrate. Now these insulin receptor substrate molecules in their active form, they basically follow a series of steps that ultimately helps activate protein kinases into the active form. So this is basically the insulin signal transduction pathway. And once these protein kinases are activated, they go on to stimulate target enzyme and target proteins. And in this particular case, these protein kinases go on to inactivate glycogen synthase kinase into the inactive form. So by phosphorylating the glycogen synthase kinase, these protein kinases basically inactivate the glycogen synthase kinase. Now, let's remember what the purpose of glycogen synthase kinase is. So, in their active form, the glycogen synthase kinase molecules phosphorylate glycogen synthase A and they transform the glycogen synthase A, which are the molecules in their active form, into glycogen synthase B, which exists predominantly in their inactive form. Now remember that glycogen synthase is the molecule that is responsible in the active form to actually create the glycogen molecule. So these glycogen synthase A in their active form stimulate glycogenesis, the production, the synthesis of glycogen molecules from glucose precursors. But if the glycogen synthase kinase is active, that it keeps the glycogen synthase in the glycogen synthase be the inactive form and that prevents glycogenesis. So in this particular case, when we ingest the meal rich in carbohydrates, that ultimately stimulates the release of insulin that creates the insulin signal transduction pathway that ultimately produces protein kinases which inactivate the glycogen synthase kinase. And when the glycogen synthase kinase is inactivated, it no longer carries out this process. It no longer phosphorylates the glycogen synthase A into glycogen synthase B. Now, what that basically means is we're not going to carry out this process, but there must be something that stimulates this process. So 
even though we inactivate the glycogen synthase kinase, that doesn't mean that that's going to stimulate glycogenesis. What must also takes pla take place is we must somehow convert the glycogen synthase B in the inactive form back to the glycogen synthase A. And what happens in this particular case is we have to activate another enzyme known as PP1, where PP1 stands for protein phosphatase 1. Because it's protein phosphatase 1 in the active form that dephosphorylates glycogen synthase B and forms the active form of glycogen synthase A. And only glycogen synthase A can actually stimulate glycogenesis. So we see that from steps 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, insulin ultimately causes the inactivation of glycogen synthase kinase, the enzyme that keeps glycogen synthase in the inactive form. Now, in order to actually transform this glycogen synthase B into the active form, the glycogen synthase A, our liver cells must initiate glycogenesis. And to do this, they have to actually activate PP1 because it's protein phosphatase 1 that stimulates this conversion and that's what allows the glycogen synthase A to induce the process of glycogenesis. So in this diagram, we're basically going to describe how the PP1 is actually activated. So let's move on to diagram 7. So in diagram 7, we have the protein phosphatase 1, and as we discussed in the previous lecture, protein phosphatase 1 is bound to a regulatory region, and that's the region shown here. Now, this molecule is in its inactive form. The PP1 is, its is in its inactive form, and the reason is because it is bound to phosphorylase A in the R state. So, phosphorylase A in the R state basically means it's in a relaxed state, and when phosphorylase A is in a relaxed state, it is fully active. So, phosphorylase A is fully active, but it's bound to this, and that makes the protein phosphatase 1 in Active. Now, we want to activate this molecule, and so what our body does is when there is a rise in glucose levels in our blood, that causes the uptake of glucose into the liver cells. And so the cytoplasmic glucose concentration increases within the liver cells following the ingestion of the meal that is rich in carbohydrates. And these phosphorylase A molecules basically serve as glucose sensors because they're able to actually bind the glucose molecule. So we have these two pockets on the phosphorylase A and the R state that can bind the glucose. And once the glucose is bound to these two sections, that causes the transformation of the phosphorylase A in the R state, the active state, into the inactive T state. So the glucose bind onto phosphorylase A, they cause the transformation from the R state, the relaxed active state, into the T state, the tense state, and the tense state is the inactivated state. So upon the rise of, of um, glucose concentration, it basically stimulates the transformation of R state into the T state. At the same time, it decreases the attraction between the, uh, the protein phosphatase 1 and the phosphorylase A. So upon the binding of glucose, these two structures basically dissociate. So let's suppose one goes here, this is phosphorylase A in the T state, and the remaining portion goes here. And as soon as the dissociation takes place, that activates this protein phosphatase 1. And once protein phosphatase 1 is active, it goes on and acts on glycogen synthase B, and remember that phosphatases, they, de uh, uh, they dephosphorylate that molecule. So in this particular case, the protein phosphatase 1 along with the regulatory chain, they go on to dephosphorylate the glycogen synthase B into the glycogen synthase A. And remember, because of this particular pathway, the protein kinases inactivate the glycogen synthase kinase, and this process does not take place. So we're only going in this direction here.
And once we stimulate glycogen synthase A, that stimulates the process of glycogenesis, the building of those glycogen molecules from glucose precursors. Now, what also happens is the following. Once the phosphorylase A in the T state dissociates, we don't want this molecule to reassociate with this structure. And to keep it from reassociating, this same molecule, the protein phosphatase 1, goes on and dephosphorylates this phosphorylase A in the T state, and that transforms the phosphorylase A in the T state to phosphorylase B in the T state, and this molecule has a lower affinity for this structure here. And so these will not associate, these will not reassociate, and this protein phosphatase 1 can continually stimulate this molecule to go into the active form, and that will stimulate the process of glycogenesis. So we see that in 7, phosphorylase A is used to sense, actually let's begin from the beginning and let's summarize what we just said. So Let's suppose we just exercised and now we ingested a meal that is rich in carbohydrates. And so what that does is it helps our liver cells replenish their glycogen supplies. How? Well, let's take a look at the summary. So we have the beta cells of our pancreas secrete insulin. Insulin binds onto the insulin receptor protein that initiates the insulin signal transduction pathway. And that ultimately leads to the activation of protein kinases. These protein kinases then go on to deactivate glycogen synthase kinase into its inactive form. So it stimulates the inactivation of this molecule. Now this molecule in the active state keeps the glycogen synthase A in the inactive state. But as soon as we inactivate it, now there's nothing that actually transforms the glycogen synthase A into the glycogen synthase B. But we still need that molecule, the protein phosphatase 1, to stimulate the conversion of this inactive glycogen synthase into the active form for us to actually form the glycogen molecules. And so this is what happens here. We have the phosphorylase A in the R state that is bound to this protein phosphatase 1. And because of that association, this molecule is not active. Now, Phosphorylase A in the R state acts as a glucose sensor. And when the glucose levels in the cytoplasm of that liver increase, they begin to bind the glucose and the glucose acts as an allosteric inhibitor. It basically transforms the active R state into the inactive T state. And that leads to the dissociation of these two molecules. So we basically form the phosphorylase A in the 10 state and our protein phosphatase 1. Now, to keep this molecule from reassociating with this, the phosphatase essentially dephosphorylates the phosphorylase A into phosphorylase B, and the phosphatase also goes on and activates the glycogen synthase B into glycogen synthase A. And this is what allows our liver cells to actually regenerate and replenish their supplies of glycogen.